All right, so today I'm going to teach you how to do the quadratic equation. I'm going to go through it really slowly, step by step, which is the way I learned it, and I think that's the best way to learn it. And I'm just getting over a cold right now, so I apologize if my voice is a little hoarse or if I'm clearing my throat. I'll try and keep that to a minimum. So our first step in the quadratic equation is making sure that it's in the right form. And the right form is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And this part is really important, making sure that it's equal to zero. A lot of people forget that, but if you don't have zero on one side of the equation and all this on the other, then it's not in the right form. And so um, to break this down for you, the x's will all stay the same, both the x's. Um, will just look like the x's when you have a real equation, but the a will be a number, and the b will be a number, and the c will be a number. And so some examples here, we're going to identify a, b, and c in both of the, uh, these equations. And so if we start with the one on the left here, if we're looking for a, a will always be in front of the x squared. So that would be our a right there, would be that negative 2. And then our b will always be in front of just the regular x, not the x squared. And so our b in this equation would be 4. And then our c doesn't have any, any x's with it, it's just a number. So c would be 9. And then with our second example over here, if we look for our a, it will be in front of the x squared. And there's nothing in front of the x squared, so there's an implied 1 right there. So our a would be 1. And then our b in front of the x here would be 6, and our c would be negative 2. So hopefully that's pretty straightforward. This is our example that we're going to be working with as I'm going through all of this and teaching you the quadratic equation. I'm going to be sticking with this example um, as we do each step to introduce it to you, and then we'll do some uh, practice examples as well at the end. But let's start with our first step for this, is identifying the a, b, and c, and making sure that it's in the right form. And so if we look at it, we've got x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And so we do have the 0 on the right-hand side, so that's right. And we have it in the right order and everything. So once again, there's nothing in front of the x squared here, so there's just going to be an implied 1. So our a will be equal to 1. And then for our b, we have... 2 in front of our regular x, so our b would be 2. And then our c would be 3, but we have to remember that since it's minus 3, we have to put a negative 3. And so then the next step would be plugging in these numbers. And so here I have the quadratic formula already written out. It's x squared is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, then all of that over 2a. And I'd encourage you to memorize the quadratic formula. A lot of people don't, but it actually comes in handy. I was forced to memorize it, and you'd be surprised how much that it comes up. And so I think that if you have the time to sit down and memorize it, it's not that hard, and it'll really end up being pretty useful at some point. And so let's start out with our a, b, and c, which, remember, our a was equal to 1 and our b was equal to 2, and our c was negative 3. And so now we go through and just plug this in, and it's equal to x, and then our negative b, so we have a negative 2, plus or minus, and then a square root of b squared, so that would be 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, and then also times c, which is negative 3. And you want to make sure that you're getting all of this under the square root sign, because sometimes people mess up and only get the b squared, or only get part of it, and then you end up having mistakes later down the line. So it's really important to make sure all of that is under the square root. And so then we do all of this over our 2a, which would be 2 times 1. And so then our next step is focusing on the b squared. And so right here I have the quadratic formula written out again, and I've highlighted where the b squared is. And so now if we look at our equation that we just wrote on the last page, we can tell that the b squared would be this 2 squared right here. 
And so we take 2 squared is equal to 2 times 2, as you probably know, which is equal to 4. And so now if we write all this out again, we've got x is equal to r minus b, which is negative 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so we'll go ahead and put in a 4 for that, minus 4ac, so 4 times 1 times negative 3, all over r2a, which is 2 times 1. And then our step number four is going to be focusing on the 4ac, which once again I've highlighted that in the quadratic equation. And here is our um, equation written out again here. And if we look at it, we can see that the 4ac would be this little chunk right here. And so we have 4 times 1 times negative 3. And so 4 times 1 is just 4 times negative 3 would be a negative 12, so negative 12. And if we're going to write all of this out again, we have our x equals r minus b, so negative 2, plus or minus square root of b squared, which remember that was a 4, and then minus our 4ac, which is negative 12. And as you probably know, minus a negative is a positive, so I'm just going to write plus 12 there and then all over our 2a, which is 2 times 1. And so then, moving on to our step number 5, it's focusing on the square root. Remember I pointed out to you to make sure that we get everything under the square root. And so now we're going to go ahead and solve everything under that square root. And here's our quadratic formula, and that's the little section that we're going to be focusing on right there. And if we look at our equation with our example, we can see that um, in our equation, that would be this section right here, that square root of 4 plus 12. So square root of 4 plus 12 would be equal to the square root of 16. And as you probably know, 16 is 4 times 4. So in that case, the square root of 16 would just be equal to 4. And so let's write all that out again. We have x equals, that's important too, always, always remember that this is equal to x. You want to write that out with every step, that way you don't lose track of it. And then our minus b is negative 2, and then plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac. And remember, um, we figured all that out and did all that math to figure that was 4 plus 12, and then we got that as 4, so we'll just write a 4 in there. And then all over 2a which is 2 times 1. And so our next step, our step number 6, would be to solve 2a. And that's just the denominator here. That's the bottom little chunk in our quadratic equation. And if we look at it in our example, we can see that it's that chunk right there, which is just 2 times 1. And since our a is just 1, that's pretty easy. That's just 2 could have probably even knocked that out earlier, but just to make sure that you get this step, because A won't always be that easy. Sometimes you'll have to actually multiply it out. But we got that done pretty quickly, and so we can write it out again as x equals negative 2 plus or minus 4, then all over 2. And then our step number 7 is where we have to split off. You've probably noticed this weird little plus or minus that we have right there, and you'll always have that every time you do the quadratic equation, you'll always have to deal with that. And so the way we do that is, rather than just trying to solve that, we have to do two separate equations. And so here we have x equals negative 2 plus 4 over 2, and over here we have x equals negative 2 minus 4 over 2. So that's the way you deal with that, is you just have to break it off into two separate parts and do each one. So we'll start over here with this half. Negative 2 plus 4 would be equal to positive 2, and then that's over 2. And so right here we just have a 1. So we've got x equals 1 for that half. And then for this other half over here, negative 2 minus 4 would be equal to negative 6. And then that's over 2, and if we simplify that, we have a negative 3. 
And so then for this half, we would have x equals negative 3. And so a lot of people would think that they're finished after this point because we have, we have what x equals. And in some cases, that's true. But it's also really important to check your work because it doesn't always work out. Sometimes you'll get your x equals and you'll go back and you'll put it in your equation and it, it just won't, it won't solve it. You won't get 0 equals 0. You'll get something weird like 2 equals 1 and that's obviously not right. So it's really important to put um, your numbers back into the original equation, which if you remember, in this case was x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And so all you have to do for this is you plug in the numbers. So for this first one, we'd have 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 3. And then hopefully that will equal 0. So if we solve that out, we've got 1 squared is 1 plus 2 minus 3. 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. So we ended up with 0 equals 0 at the end, basically. And so that part checks out, so that's good. And then if we do our other x equals, x is equal to negative 3. So we have negative 3 squared for that part, plus a 2 times this negative 3, and then minus 3, hopefully equal to 0. And so negative 3 squared is just 9. Remember, a negative times another negative is a positive. So we end up with positive 9. And then adding 2 times 3 would be 6. So a negative 3. So that's basically subtracting 6. Then minus another 3. So we end up with 9 minus 9 equals 0. Or 0 equals 0, which is good. So both of those check out. And we can confidently say that our answers for this one are x equals negative 3 and x equals 1. And so I'm going to do a couple more examples with you just to kind of, you know, pound this in, help you get it some more. I learned by doing a lot of examples, and I think that's the best way to really learn this. And so here's our next example. We have x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. And so our first step is going to be checking and making sure it's in the right form. We've got an x squared with an implied 1 in front of that. And then minus 3x minus 10. And we do have the 0 on um, the 1 side, so that's correct. That's in the right form. And so now we have to identify our a, our b, and our c. And so our a is that implied 1 that's in front of the x squared. So we have a is equal to 1. And then our b is the negative 3 in front of the x. Remember, b will always be in front of x. And so b is equal to negative 3. And then our c would just be that number there, which is a negative 10. If it said plus 10, we would have a positive 10. Same thing if it said plus 3x, it would be a positive 3. But you have to make sure to be paying attention to whether or not those are um, plus signs or minus signs, because that'll affect um, what your a, b, and c are, and then that will affect your whole equation. If you mess up at this step, then you're just going to have to go back and do all of it again. And trust me, that really sucks. So pay attention to the little details when you're at the beginning. And so now our step number two is plugging everything in. So our a was 1, b was negative 3, and c was negative 10. So start with minus b. Um, remember, minus a negative would be a positive. So our minus b, since it's already negative, we can just do positive 3. Remember, that's x equals all of this. And then that annoying little plus or minus. And then the square root of b squared. So a negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, so times our 1 and then times c, so our negative 10. And then all over 2a, and remember r2 is 1. So that's what our equation should look like. And then if we move on to our step 3, there's our equation written out again. And remember step 3 was uh, solving for the b squared, which if we look down here, we can find our b squared right here. And so for this step, we'll have to solve for a negative 3 squared, which is 
equal to negative 3 times negative 3. A negative times another negative is a positive, and so we end up with a positive 9. If we write all this out again, we have x equals r minus b, so a positive 3, plus or minus square root of b squared, which we just figured out was 9, so I'll put a 9 in there, minus our 4ac, so 4 times 1 times negative 10, then all over 2a, so our 2 times 1. And so our step number 4, if you remember, was doing the 4ac. So if you look at our equation here, we can see 4ac right here. And so we have 4 times 1 times negative 10. And so that would just be equal to a 4 times a negative 10, because 4 times 1 is just 4, which would be equal to negative 40. Yes, negative 40, that's right. And so if we write this all out again, we've got x equals our b squared, or sorry, minus b, so a positive 3, plus or minus square root of b squared, which we figured out was 9, then minus our 4ac, which we just figured out was negative 40, and so minus a negative is a positive, so that would be plus 40, then all over 2a. And so if we move on to our next step, step number five was the square root. So that's everything right there. And so we have a square root of 9 plus 40, which is equal to the square root of 49. And you probably know 49 is equal to 7 times 7. So we can just go ahead and simplify that to a 7. Awesome. And now if we write this out again, we have x equals, always remember x equals 3, that was our negative b plus or minus a 7 all over our 2a, which was 2 times 1. And so our step number 6, our green step, was figuring out 2a. And if we look at our equation here as we've written it, we can see our 2a right down here. 2a is always going to be the de denominator, so you can just find that in the lower chunk. It's pretty easy to identify. And once again, a was just equal to 1, so it's pretty easy. 2 times 1 equals 2. So if we write this out again, we have x equals 3 plus or minus 7 all over 2. Now, step 7 was the whole weird splitting it into two different equations parts. And so over here on this side, we're going to have the plus. We're going to forget about the minus there. So we have x is equal to 3 plus 7 over 2. And so 3 plus 7 is equal to 10. So 10 over 2, which is equal to 5. So we would get an x equals 5 for that half right there. And then for our other half, we're going to forget about the plus, and we're just going to focus on the minus there. So we would have 3 minus 7 over 2, and don't forget that's equal to x. So 3 minus 7 over 2 would be equal to negative 4 over 2, or just negative 2 once you simplify that out. So we have x equals 5 and x equals negative 2 on that side. And then our last step is checking it. And so if we plug this back in, that's our original equation right there x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. So we'll put the 5 there for x squared. We have a 5 squared minus 3 times 5 minus 10 is equal to 0. And now we do some math. 5 squared would be 25 minus 3 times 5, which is 15, then minus 10 equals 0. If we combine that together, we've got 25 minus 15 minus 10 would be minus 25 and that's equal to 0. 
And so we've got zero equals zero, that half checks out. And now for this half over here, x is equal to negative two, so we do a negative two squared minus three times negative two minus 10 will hopefully equal zero. So negative two squared would be a positive four minus three times a negative two. Three times negative two would be a negative six. So it would be minus negative six. We can just put that as a plus six. And then minus 10 equals zero. And if we add those together, we get a 10 minus 10 equals zero or zero equals zero. So that half checks out as well. So we can go ahead and circle these as our answers since they both checked out. And so now we're just going to do one last example. I'm going to go through this one kind of quickly since I've shown you guys the last two examples. And um, hopefully you can follow along. So step one, check that's in the right form. We have x squared with an implied 1 in front of that. And then plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So we do have the 0 on that side and everything over here looks right. So that looks good. And so now let's identify our a, b, and c. So a would be that implied one that's in front of the x squared. a will always be in front of x squared. So we can put down a one for that. And then b would be this two right there in front of the x. And make sure you check that is a positive, so it's a positive two. If that was a minus, it would be a negative. And our c is that eight. And since it's subtracting the eight, it would be a negative eight. And then our step two would be to plug it in. And so our quadratic formula, x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac all over two a. So we have our x equals minus b, so a negative two plus or minus square root of b squared, so a two squared minus four times a, which is one, times c, which is negative eight then all over 2a which is two times one and then our step number three would be the b squared so this well two squared right here so two squared equals two two times two which is equal to four so now we know that for that chunk right there we can put in a four and our step four was four ac should be that little chunk right there. And so 4ac is 4 times 1 times a negative 8. So that would be 4 times negative 8, which would be equal to negative 32. Yes, that's right, negative 32. And so now if we were just going to write all this out again, we would have our x equals r minus b, so negative two, plus or minus square root of b squared, remember we figured out four was b squared, minus four ac, and so minus four ac, that was that chunk, and remember we figured that out as negative 32, and so since it's minus a negative, we'll just put a plus 32, and then all over 2a, so our two times one. Can you pause it real fast? 